Hey guys, so this is CJ Fox, and um, I'm doing this learning module for you guys as part of a study for the ED residents to see if we're able to reliably detect wall motion abnormalities. And at first this can sound really daunting and difficult, but um, I'm hoping over the next 10 minutes or so I'll be able to turn something that sounds like it's difficult and uh, actually um, make it pretty easy and demystify it. Um, so first of all, um, real quick, what are wall motion abnormalities? So uh, we're looking for things like akinesis, uh, which is lack of movement in the wall, dyskinesis, which is paroxysmal uh, movement of the wall. Um, and if you're having trouble, some of these images can be difficult to tell. There's a lot of things moving around. Um, but another thing you can always look for is if the wall itself is thickening, uh, which would indicative be indicative of, um, of contraction. So first of all, uh, I think the easiest way to conceptualize this is to look at look at the heart as you normally do kind of in this view and just see where the major vessels are and then flip that so you're kind of cutting the the heart in half into the parasternal short axis view and this is what you come up with and I'm not going to focus on what the names of the different parts of the walls are there's there's a lot of different uh, things in cardiology for areas of the heart. We're not going to deal with any of that today. Um, what I want to show with this is you, once you turn the heart, you can kind of conceptualize. So the top part is where the LAD runs. Um, the, uh, the lateral portion is where the circumflex is, and then down on the inferior part is where the RCA. So we're going to keep coming back to this diagram multiple times uh, throughout uh, just to help uh, keep all of this in mind. Okay, so um, after we have that, we kind of um, have come up with these different areas of where the circumflex LAD runs. We can see they cover these areas of the parasternal uh, view. So, obtaining the views uh, correctly is very important, um, and especially uh, further down the road when we try and kind of show and prove to cardiology that we can do this reliably. We want to make sure we get good views. So, um, everything kind of starts uh, with the parasternal long. So, um, and I'm not going to go in too much of how to get these views, but um, one thing to keep in mind is that making sure that the images are oriented correctly on the screen. So um, in cardiology, as well as uh, at Maine Medical Center, we always have the marker dot um, on the right side of the, of the machines. Um, but the rest of emergency medicine uh, literature always has it on the left. Um, regardless of where the marker dot is, the most important thing to remember is where the apex should be situated in the parasternal long. So it should always be to the left side of the screen. So this is the view you want to obtain for uh, parasternal long. Now, after we obtain that, we go back here and we take a look at our our diagram from parasternal short, we'll see the long axis goes directly through LAD circulation as well as the circumflex. So then uh, this view on the right shows uh, how that should look in parasternal long. So here's a view of parasternal, sh parasternal long and um, <clears throat> looking for any kind of wall motion abnormalities. So again, the top part is uh, septum and supplied by the LAD, and the bottom portion is supplied by the circumflex. So this is another, and I'll 
take a look here again think of where the LAD and where the circumflex is and we're looking for any low motion abnormalities and this is a pretty good um, example of a circumflex uh, lesion Okay. So now we're transitioning over to the parasternal short and again as long as you have your parasternal long in the correct view transitioning to the parasternal short is very easy. You just rotate the probe 90 degrees clockwise. Okay, So turning that way 90 degrees and you're going to get your parasternal short. So after you get parasternal short, then you want to be able to see if rock through the entire uh, length of the heart. So going from the base to the apex and making sure you catch all portions of the, uh, the heart that way as well, as well as you can. So again, going back to our view, uh, that's what we're looking at for parasternal short. And let's look at some examples here. So um, this one, get your bearings real quick and see what you think. You got LAD, the RCA, and the circumflex. So this is a normal, um, uh, normal no akinesis here. So next, take a look at this one. Again, get your bearings and look in the area of the LAD looks like it's moving pretty well. The RCA maybe not so much and the circumflex maybe a little bit but it's it's tough. I would, I would have difficulty discerning for sure RCA or circumflex and um, in a case like this you'd certainly want to catch some more views and see if you could really nail down um, where that regional wall motion abnormality is. So Next is the apical four chamber, and to um, this one I always find difficult and um, to make sure that you have the LV on the right side of the screen and knowing for sure that it's the LV and it's not actually the RV. Um, so to do this, Three. what you do is go from parasternal short with that same orientation and then you go straight down towards um, the PMI and don't change the orientation at all uh, as far as rotating the probe you just go straight down and then you point the, uh, the probe towards the patient's right side and from there you need to tweak a little bit but uh, you should be able to get your apical four chamber from that view and on the bottom portion of the screen it's just again showing the diagram and um, how it should look. Now to get a good true apical four chamber you need the, um, the septum to be vertical on the screen. So just keep that in mind as you're scanning. So looking at a schematic of how things look with apical four chamber you can catch all three coronaries uh, in this way um, and the, the LAD dominates the apex and the circumflex gets the lateral wall there and the RCA kind of the more proximal septum okay so here's a apical four chamber um, you can see the top is the LAD, the septum, uh, and the apex seem to be moving really well. I'd say that there's a little bit of uh, dyskinesis um, on the lateral wall there, which correlates with the circumflex. Okay. All right, so we're going to go through a bunch of cases here. Um, this next set are all from the same patient uh, and again this is what you're going to want to do with with all of your patients who are worried about this make sure you're catching in multiple planes so this first view is parasternal short and I think this one's a little bit difficult uh, to tell exactly what's going on um, but uh, you know 
on this one, maybe the RCA, maybe the LAD. Um, but then going down, looking at this next one, uh, the apical four chamber, you can see that septum really isn't moving very much. Um, unfortunately, on that view, you can't catch the lateral wall very well. And then on this final view, you do get the lateral wall, and it looks like it's moving. Um, so this looks most consistent with an RCA lesion. Okay. Now this is a parasternal long. And what do you guys think? Yeah, those walls look like they're moving pretty well. Again, you only want to look at your EF too. You got the uh, mitral valve leaflet, leaflet slap, snapping all the way open, um, kind of hitting that uh, septum there. So, yeah, this is a normal parasternal long. Okay, another apical four. You seeing anything there? And this is another normal one. And now you have a parasternal short. And again, a little bit difficult to tell. You can definitely see the area of the circumflex on the right side of the screen is seems to be moving. The RCA seems to be doing okay, but the LAD I think is uh, is akinetic there at the top. Okay, and another parasternal short. Uh, a little bit better view on this one. So. Where is that? That would definitely be the RCA. Okay, guys, so I hope this was helpful for you. Um, again, really not that difficult. It's um, really one of the hardest parts is just, again, conceptualizing where those coronary arteries run and then kind of manipulating that image in your mind's eye of uh, how that correlates with um, with your cardinal views for echo. So uh, look for a quiz on this stuff in two weeks and then again in six weeks. And I uh, hope that was helpful. Take care.